blessed assurance Jesus is mine Oh, what a foretaste Of glory divine Air of salvation Purchased of God Born of His Spirit Washed in His blood This is my story This is my song Praising my Savior Raising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, perfect delight, visions of rapture.
the plan to see This man, he was betrayed Crucified for you and me This man only wanted to make us free Oh yes he did But in three days, heroes win all yeah, 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 yeah. Three days, heroes win all yeah, yeah. Three days, heroes win all yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm gonna give it all I have I'm gonna give it all I have I'm gonna give it all I have If this moment Come on Elijah Come on play, come on play Come on play, come on play Somebody say play Elijah, play Elijah I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. For I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. And though after my skin worms destroy this body, Yet in my flesh shall I see God, whom I shall see for myself, and mine eyes shall behold, and not another. Amen. Yes, I'm free. I'm free. Jesus, 
This is the day that the Lord hath made. And we are here to rejoice and to be glad in it. Amen. We, on behalf of the family of Missionary Gloria May Fletcher, amen. We welcome you here today. This is a homegoing service. Amen. So if you've not been to one of our homegoing services, it might seem a little different to what you think. This is not a funeral because we are not focused on death. But today we are focused on life and leaving this life down here for life eternal. Think of it as you may as a graduation service. And when we go to a graduation service, we see the joy of the Lord. Amen. We are not worried about, amen, our sister today because we know that she's now resting in the arms of the Lord. We don't have that confidence or consolation for everyone. Amen. But those that are die or dead in Christ, and the in Christ makes all the difference. Amen. So we can say we are rejoicing that our sister has made it to glory. And so we will be singing the songs of life and of joy. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. My name is Andrew Landell. I am the a bishop designated for the Central District Region of Bethel United Churches. Amen. We have some of our dignitaries here today, including Bishop Eric Bailey. Amen. We have, amen, Elder Nick Myers. We have Senior District Pastor Bancroft Campbell and others here with us today. And now, amen, let me just give you some housekeeping before we... Amen. Start the service. So for everyone that is here today, whether you are joining us physically or virtually, we say God bless you and thank you in Jesus name. For those that have any needs, if you need the facilities, please see one of the ushers. They will direct you around the back and everything is around there. If you should need any assistance for anything else, they are here to assist you. Amen. At this time, you should have your order of service. We are going to commence with the song, the congregational hymn, When We All Get to Heaven. Amen. Please stand and sing with us in Jesus' name. Now we'll be 
from our Bishop Eric Bailey in Jesus name Jesus. let us pray Father I stretch my hands to thee no other help eternal God do we know if thou large to withdraw thyself from us then to whom can we go Father, in the name of Jesus, I approach the mercy seat. Eternal God, where are you here? And where are you answers prayer? I know, Lord God Almighty, you wait to be gracious unto us, your children. And so as we come before you this day, oh God, we pray, God, that your presence will be felt among us, even at this present time of sorrow, of our aches and pain and sadness. But I'm glad that thou be the God that thou art. Oh God, you know our feelings and you can be touched with the feelings of our infirmity. I pray today, Lord, for the Fletcher's family and for all that are involved at this present time. Almighty God, with the loss of their mother. But it's oftentimes saying that earthly loss is heavenly gain. And so God Almighty, we know that we would see this day Ah, oh God, and I pray, God, that you will remember them in mercy and you will remember them in love. Thou art a comfort to the comfortless. Oh, God, and for that I pray today that you will ever be with them every step of the way. A mother that they have known all their life, one that has given birth to them. Oh, God in heaven, bring them up, oh, Lord Jesus, till they come to the age of accountability. Oh, Lord, I can remember the days even of my mother. Oh, Lord Jesus, the prayer she prayed. Oh, God, that we would grow up, Lord God Almighty, before you take her life and you grant her that favor. And today I'm so grateful, Lord, for even the Fletcher's family. Lord, you have spared their parents' life until they've grown up. And so, God, I pray that you will be with them here today. Oh, God, such a close family. And I pray that you will sustain them in everything that they do. Lord God, they will be there for one another. 
Mother and father is no longer here, oh God, in heaven, but they are there today. And I pray, God, that you will ever keep them in the center of your will. The church in West Bromwich, too. God Almighty, we pray for the saints. There is not just a personal loss, but also the family of the church. And the pastor, oh God Almighty, Bishop Landell, oh God, may you be with them today. Each and every one that have come through these doors, I pray, God, that you will sustain them and keep them. And remind us every time, God, that we attend the funeral, that a day will come because we all have an appointment with you. Oh God, for it's appointed unto man once to die. But after that, there comes the judgment. Lord, I lift them up today. God Almighty, be thou our strength. Be their comfort, oh God, in their darkest moment. When they feel down, eternal God, they will remember the goodness of their mother. Sustain them, the grandchildren, and maybe even the great-grandchildren. Everyone involved in this family, God, I bring them before you today. Oh God, we know, Lord, amen, that there will come a day, oh God, when this body, they shall rise up back from the grave. Oh God Almighty, triumph, oh God, in victory, because you promised it, Jesus, to the church, oh God, that as you've been risen, so you will rise up the church. And so we pray for them today. Bless Lord and lead for us as we beg and ask it now. The heart once again. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 God bless you, saints. You may be seated at this moment. Amen. Yeah. Today, as I have heard Bishop Bailey pray, is a day that's appointed to every one of us. When I heard the, and when I had the phone call in the early morning from Minister Rob, it took me a while to register what he was actually saying. Amen. Because Missionary Fletcher, Sister Fetty, is one of those that didn't cause anybody any problem in the church. I was reflecting that I must have known her over five decades. And in that time in her house, amen, with the children, maybe they were on their best behavior when we arrived. But in five decades, the only time I ever heard Sister Fetty's voice was when she was giving God thanks under the anointing of the Holy Ghost. I cannot remember a time when I've heard her raise her voice. Amen. She never gave any problems in life. And she went peaceably to the Lord not to give any fuss to anyone in death. We can celebrate a life like that. And we can learn from someone like that. Gave Jesus their all and gave no fuss. Amen. Maybe that will be an epitaph that all of us can strive to. Four. Amen. On behalf today of the Church of Mount Horeb, Amen. And Bethel United, Amen. Generally, Amen. Amen. As you know, some of the bishops would have loved to have been here today, but there is another funeral going on at exactly the same time. Amen. But on their behalf, Bishop Dexter Edmund, Amen. We share and extend our condolences and sympathy to you. So to Michael, Pauline, Audrey, Sandra. And Andrea, God bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. We were here, I think it was 2016, for Brother Fletcher. Many of us were here back then, and we are here now. And look, at that time, some of us would have thought that the love that they had, Sister Fetty would have wanted to go in 2016. But she realized that some of you needed her to stay. She, the Bible says sometimes we're in a straight betwixt two. Uh, we want to go. But for somebody's amen benefit, then we have to stay. Well, she stayed another five, five plus years. Amen. To make certain that every one of you now is able to stand on your own feet. And she has gone home to be with the Lord. Isn't that worth celebrating today? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. One item that I missed up while we're getting ready um, to hear this, the first scripture being read by Michael and pray for him as he comes that he will be strengthened. Praise the 
Praise the Lord, saints. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, the first scripture taken today is from Psalms 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod, thy staff, thy comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointed my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Glory God. Amen. At this time, we're going to have a tribute from someone who holds this lady very dear. It's James Beckford, grandson. Come, sir. God bless you. In Jesus' name. Yes. Encourage him while he's coming. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord and good morning, everybody. Um, I'm here today on behalf of all the grandchildren to pay tribute to the life um, of our grandmother. I'm the oldest grandchild. Um, and for all the grandchildren, um, she was definitely more than a grandmother. Uh, for so many years, uh, most of us called her Mommy Fletcher. So when I say Mommy Fletcher, it means nan or grandma. But I'm, I'm still 36 years old and I still refer to as Mommy Fletcher to this day. She's influenced us so much as grandchildren and had a huge impact on all our lives. And she's taught us so much um, from the things that she said and also by the things that she did in their actions and words. On the morning that she passed away, as we sat in the house, and we were stood in, in disbelief. My auntie Sandra just um, commented that, you know, she ordered a Christmas present. And we said, well, what did you buy her? And she said, I bought her some perfume. We said, what perfume did you get her? And she said, Armani cold. Now, like, if you know my grandmother, she doesn't leave the house very often. So the question is, if you don't leave the house very often, why would you need such an expensive perfume? A couple of years ago, I said to Mummy Fletcher, what do you want for your birthday? She went, Armani cold. I went, for what? You don't go anywhere. <laughs> what do you want Armani cold for? And she says, I like to look good. I like to smell good every day. I don't need a reason. I don't need a special occasion. I'm a Fletcher. I look good and I smell good every day. And that is a life lesson that she has taught us. Live your life and live your best life. Don't wait for a special occasion to live your life. Don't wait for a special occasion to wear your nice perfume. Don't wait for a special occasion to get dressed up, but live your life. Don't wait until lockdown restrictions finish before you can go to Jamaica. If you can't go, then get into your car, go to Scotland, go Cornwall, go Centre Park, but make sure you have a holiday, but live your life. If you've got your fine cutlery in your house and you find China, don't wait for special occasions. Live your life. Don't put your life on hold, waiting for something to happen in your life or for someone to come into your life before you can really enjoy your life. Live your life and live your best life at that. And you know, we have to stand here right now. It wouldn't surprise me if it was, if it was in her, her last word in Testament. As you bury me, Spray me up with some um, Armani yeah. perfume and a lame terrace at the same time. <laughs> she taught us the importance of identifying opportunities and not being willing to let them go. And it's a lesson that I'm still learning now. If you go to Hilltop, every time you're about to leave, she'll find something for you to do. And if she ever finds out you're on annual leave and you've got time off work, <laughs> she'll plan out your whole annual leave for you. So I'll be at your top sometimes and I'll be, Mummy Fletcher, I'm going now. All right, all right, take care, take care, take care. And I'll walk out the living room, through the dining area, through the kitchen, through the hallway. I'll open the first porch door. And as I put my hand onto the last porch door, she'll go, 
James? I had to come all the way back round and I'll say to you, yes, Mum Fletcher. I said, um, where are you going? Um, I'm going north, Mum Fletcher. Okay, okay. Um, if you're going south, um, I need some milk and bread. Mum Mum Fletcher, I just said, yeah, I'm going north. I know, I know, I know, I know. But if you're going south, this is Mummy Fletcher identifying an opportunity and not being willing to let it go. If you look on my WhatsApp, you see my display picture. It's one of my favourite pictures of me, Mummy Fletcher. It's me, Mummy Fletcher, and as down, and we're taking a selfie. As you look in that picture, you can see the smile on her face. She's like the cat who got the cream. That day, I had no intention of going to Asda. I had no intention of going south. But because Mommy Fletcher identified an opportunity, she was not willing to let it go. The day that she died and we sat in the house, we realised that in Mount Horeb and Tipton the next day, there was a, a meeting, a church meeting. It was a reunion for those who um, haven't been in church for a while. And the question was asked, well, what do we do? We weren't expecting Mum to go we got caterers coming, we've got people coming, what do we do? And the decision was made that we're going to carry on. Mummy Fletcher would have wanted us to carry on. Right. And we cannot let this opportunity pass us by. It's an opportunity for people to come to the house of the Lord to fellowship. And we don't know how God's going to move or what God's going to do. So despite how we feel, we're not going to allow this opportunity to pass us by. And that's something that she has taught us and put into us as a mother and as a grandmother. The last thing she taught us, and for me it's the most important, it's all about legacy. She taught us how to receive a legacy, how to maintain a legacy, how to build upon it and multiply it, ready for the next generation to pick up. 37 years ago, my great-grandfather, who was affectionately known as Papa, he passed away 37 years ago. Within 12 months, I was born. I'm the first generation of the great grandkids at that point. I then turned five years old. Within 12 months of me turning five years old, my great grandmother, who was known as Mama, she passes away. A whole generation is now gone. Mommy Fletcher was in this very building, in this very setting, sitting in this very seat right now, mourning the loss of her mother, having just lost her father a few years ago, just as we're doing right now today. A legacy was passed down. It is a legacy that has a foundation that is built upon Jesus Christ. It is a legacy that has a backbone of intercessory prayer. It's not normal prayer, it is intercessory prayer. It is a legacy that has a unique family culture. It's a culture of togetherness that has values that help maintain a deep loving relationship in the family. It is a legacy that is a generational blessing. I say all that to say this. Six years ago, as Bishop Landau said, Daddy Fletcher passed away, the great grandfather. Within 12 months of Daddy Fletcher passing away, the first great grandchild is born just like me. That was Elijah. Elijah turned five years old last year. And within 12 months of Elijah turning five, the great grandmother passes away in the exact same way that the previous generation did. Now, we have watched Mommy Fletcher be in this exact same situation that we're in right now. She had the same emotions, had the same feelings that we share right now. But she showed us the example of what it means to take on a legacy here in the UK, whilst in Canada, Uncle Errol, Auntie Sonia, and in the UK, um, hoping and um, took upon their legacies in their own family too. My, my, my grandmother, Mama, and when I knew her, would tell you that she was a intercessor in prayer. She was a prayer warrior as part of that legacy. Mommy Fletcher became a prayer warrior. She didn't just take on this legacy, but she multiplied it and added to it. As the matriarch of this family, she built what is what we now know as our family prayer meeting that's been going on for over 20 years. It's through this family prayer meeting that we have prayed and we have prayed and we have prayed and we've watched God work in our family. The prayers that mama prayed and prayed and prayed from one generation coming down to this generation. And we see God answer us in so many different ways that I don't have time to speak about today. This is a legacy that we have seen from mommy Fletcher from the very start, from the conception. She was 51 years old. 
younger than most of their children I hear right now at the time. But now the baton has been passed, but the legacy shall continue. So on behalf of all the grandchildren, we give God thanks for giving us Mommy Fletcher as a grandmother. We could have been born in any family, but God will still choose it that we should have Mommy Fletcher as a grandmother. We're truly grateful for all the memories we shared. All the birthdays that he will talk when we come together as a family and we buy a cake, whether it's on co-op or from wherever. All the Christmases we spent together at Hilltop. All the holidays abroad that we shared together in, in Florida, Canada, Barbados, all the different countries. Even down, I'm so grateful to the image of the beatings that I received. And there were plenty when I was younger, believe me. But I needed it. Wow. So right now, we are grateful for the life lesson that she has taught us. And today we celebrate her life. So in the words of Mommy Fletcher, live your best life now identify opportunities and don't let them pass you by work on the legacy that you have been given whether it's from a church or a family and build upon it and if you don't have a legacy create something now to pass down to the next generation i'm not talking about money i'm talking about a legacy the legacy might have an effect of money but i'm talking about create a legacy that's something that's intangible god bless you in jesus name amen, amen. precious Memories, how they linger. Oh, glory! How they ever flood my soul. Oh, in the stillness of the Amen, amen. Wasn't that wonderful? Thank God the legacy lives on. Hallelujah. My God. God bless you, Brother James. At this time, we're going to get a tribute from Sister Fletcher's brother, Elder Errol Walters. It's coming across. Amen. The screen's right now in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord and greetings, saints, family, and loved ones. It is my pleasure to speak about my sister, Gloria Fletcher, a woman that was born for the task. Sister Gloria Fletcher, our eldest sister, who we siblings fondly and respectfully call Sister Fedi. In the Bible, the Lord told the prophet Jeremiah in, Jer in chapter 1 and verse 5, before I formed thee in the belly, I know thee, and before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctify thee, and I ordain thee. Before the Lord formed Sister Feli, he <clears throat> knew her. He sanctified her, and he ordained her for the task of being a big sister. In her role as our older sister, she was always doing some important and significant family duties, which included taking care of me. I remember that when we were in the Jamaica, our homeland, I was old enough to go to school. She was one. She was the one who would take me to school every day, and was my protector and defender. She was always looking out for me. In the late 50s, our father moved to England where there was more work and opportunities. Shortly after our father moved to 
to England, Sister Fede was the first one of the siblings to leave Jamaica and join our father in England. I was next. Those early days in England, Sister Fede was training to be a nurse and she was living at the training school during the weekend. My father and I look forward to the weekend because we knew that she would be coming home and while she was home for the weekend, she took good care of us. That's my father and myself, including taking care of our clothes, ironing, cooking, cleaning, you name it, she did it all. Family was important to my sister. In 1997, Mr. Fede led the, the group of family and, uh, family and friends to attend our a daughter's wedding in Toronto, Canada. A few years later, she led another group of family members from England to attend our nephew wedding in Alberta, Canada. And during this trip, we had the pleasure of traveling as a family throughout various locations in Western Canada including Calgary, Edmonton, Banff, and Vancouver. That's my sister for you, born for the task of bringing the family together. As brothers and sisters, we had a natural family relationship, but we also had a spiritual relationship. Sister Fede was also a day for many tasks uh, relating to our Christian relationship while we were, were in Jamaica. Uh, <clears throat> one of our cousins went to the Apostolic Church. We was, he was a handful, but God touched him. And even before he was baptized, God filled him with the Holy Ghost. I was privileged to visit that same apostolic church one Sunday night at the age of 15 years old. I too was drawn in by the Holy Spirit in, the church, in that church and I decided to get baptized. It was my sister, Fede, that <coughs> and Pak the baptismal clothes for me. Her little brother, she did this task willingly, yet in all my years in Jamaica, after I was baptized, she never attended my apostolic church. However, things change when we immigrate to England one day while singing on the young people choir at number two Gibson Road, I look up in amazement to see that my sister was dressed and ready for baptism. This was a memorable moment for me and what a blessing it is today that we are sending her off in the same church that she was baptized in many years ago. I am very thankful that she decided to make Jesus her choice and that she was ordained and sanctified to pass this legacy of work, working with the Lord on to her children, grandchildren and great-grandchildren and to those that are far off as Peter declared in Acts 2. Sis, you are like Ruth the Moabite who was willing to choose the right path and not the easy way out. You, are, you were born for the task of being a role model of what an older sister should be like. 
and you have left your precious footprints in the sands of time. The work that you were formed and ordained for is now completed. I can say of complete confidence that we will meet again someday in heaven. Rest in peace. God bless you, your brother, Errol. Amen, amen. I am the resurrection and the life, said the Lord. He that believeth on me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Yet shall he live. He that liveth and believeth on me shall never, never. ones only die to us if we forget them but the memories that we have should always live on and never never die so when you turn the photo album when you hear a certain song come on the radio you will remember them immediately and you will remember them with joy and tears aren't a problem. We can have tears of joy. Rivers of joy. Flooding my soul. My God, sometimes rivers of joy I cannot control. But rivers of joy make me so happy. And I'll never complain about rivers of joy. Amen. God bless you. Amen. We thank God for the tributes from... James, grandson, and Elder Errol, brother. Amen. At this time, we're going to receive a solo from granddaughter, Corrine Beckford. In Jesus' name, God bless you. Yes, encourage her as she's coming. Amen. That will be followed by a scripture reading by Sandra Robb, daughter. In Jesus' name, amen.
bless you. I'm going to sing this song, I Know My Redeemer Lives. Does anybody, can anybody testify? Can anybody testify in the building that our Redeemer, he lives, he's not dead. Amen. I know my Redeemer lives. And when you know, you know. Amen. God bless you. Amen, Kareen. I know my Redeemer lives. And all of creation testifies to that. I know my Redeemer lives. God bless you. 
Our second scripture reading this morning is going to be taken, it's going to be read by uh, daughter, uh, sister Sandra, missionary Sandra Robb, in Jesus' name. Amen. And this will be followed by a tribute from cousin Elder LaSalle's read in Jesus' name. scripture reading is taken from Psalms 100. So beginneth the reading of the word. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. We give God thanks for his divine word. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Missionary Sandra, now... We're going to hear from Cousin Elder LaSalle's read in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, sir. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Today, elders, saints, visiting friends, I just want to greet you in the sweet name of Jesus. I sit there listening to Brother Errol. Praise the Lord. But before and behalf of the Reed family and the church, all saints, the Walters family, the rest of Reed that's sitting in the congregation, to the Fletcher's family, we give our deepest sympathy to the family. I just want to say something. As I said, I listened to Elder Walters. He passed our church in Toronto, Canada now. This is LaSalle Reed. They call me LaSalle. We used to, I just live about a few train from where Sister Fletcher did live. They call her Fetty. I know her as Fetty. Then, I always morning, night, or noon pass this gate. Just about three minutes walk from my house to their house. Sister Porter down there laughed in. But growing up from school days, I got to pass the, this gate. My mother was a Baptist member. Her mother was a Baptist member. And carrying on always a grow up teenager. Life changed with me. I start a bit of drinking. <laughs> Only on Christmas time. <laughs> I start a bit of smoking. <laughs> The other thing, not tobacco. I smoke tobacco, but I smoke the other one as well. <laughs> but passing through at this gate every night, morning, noon, and night, I always make a lot of noise. Wake them up. It's just the other day, Sister Porter remind me. I always call mom. Her mom, Aunt Dolly, wake her up in the night because of different 
Timo's in what's going on in me. But it pleases God. 1956. There was a club hand church coming in the district. <laughs> From I was young. I got to pass that church every day to school. The name of Bishop Cressa Walker. And 1956, there was a two weeks revival. And I got, I, we always as a young boy go to Clapham Church because we go there for a lot of different things. <laughs> <laughs> because a lot of people full, what is a revelation, he was in lower sentence, what town, and he get a revelation to go to Mount Maria. One in 56, there was a two weeks revival, and the Thursday night before, 12 of us read, go to the altar. I was one of them. Some of you is sitting in here today. And the next, I come out, I make more nice for us and Dolly house and uh, the Monday night Thursday Monday night the revival gone there was a we always have cinema at the schoolroom the same school that I go then dance after I put on my clothes Going to dance. At cinema and after dance. Going on, I said, if dance put off, or the show put off, I will stop at the church. We got to pass the church. Going on, there were no dance. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> There were no dance. I stopped at church. Didn't buy no cigarette that night. But something was moving in me. I want to go and enjoy myself before Christmas. But God didn't have it so. I was in church for we we go to that church all the time and do I'll tell you something after. <laughs> I want us to smoke and I go outside and my friend, relative of mine as well, hand me a cigarette. And he said to me, Lassell, look what God done for me and you. We do nothing to serve him. And I stepped, hand him back the cigarette, and I stepped inside. Another brother huh, said to me, Lassell, will you like they come to go to the altar and they pray for you? I didn't answer. Somebody said, let it go away. And I stepped to the altar. I'm now, I see you, mama. And as I kneel down at the altar, I start to speak in a different language. You hear him yeah. say it on the yes. Yes. It was me, the cousin. And the same house that I used to pass and make nights, that night I couldn't hold my peace. There is a change. The same brother that had Errol. The next day, all night, I couldn't sleep because Reggie had to take me home. 
Aaron said after if God can save Lassell <laughs> what he is doing out there <coughs> because I, I tell the brethren in Woodbound and I never know that I was so bad until God saved me oh, Lord. <laughs> I didn't go to jail. All that we do, you as boy, eat people cane at night. <laughs> but God have some plan. Aaron said, if LaSalle can get saved, what is he doing out there? He was the first one that got baptized. In Jesus' name. Because a lot of people do. They start to complain, your mama let you go and clap on church. And they were baptized. Well. And Errol, if God can save Lassell, what am I doing out here? He baptized, coming to England. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I think she was the first one over here baptized in Jesus' name. All the three sisters were baptized in Jesus' name. And when I look and see her family, Sister Sonia in Calgary, Canada, she was baptized in Jesus' name. All because God used me to bless a family. Yes. I'm a, one of the proudest man here tonight. Yes. Although I'm sad. When I hear about the death of my cousin, we live so good. We come, I come over here, I sleep at the home, eat. Every time I talk to her, she said, I just tell my daughter about Lassell. Because the way that I was going on, I wouldn't think I would live to see 87. Wow. Amen. I look, I still drive in myself. Amen. God is good. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And I said all the time, I won't give up. Hallelujah. I was born 1934, and I was saved the 19th of November, 1956, and from that I'm holding on. And this bad boy in the district, hear this now, I said to the church, I break record, because the same pastor, I married one of the daughters. <laughs> And we're still going on over 60 odd years now. Amen. She may sit, but uh, when I go and look for her, she remember her husband. Amen. Saints of God, there's somebody in this place. No matter what you used to do, God can change your life. He turned water into wine. He then Moses to speak to the rock. But Moses strike the rock, but water still comes. Yes. God bless you. Amen. Amen. God bless you, precious family. Precious family, keep up the good work. When I look, I come here, the last funeral I come here, I hear one of my sisters, one of them preach a message as Sister Barat Kedora. Yes. So many pastors, ministers, just because of the bad boy lesson. <laughs> and here I am now, still moving on. If there is a heart here today, before this service finish, you will give your heart to God. Amen. I feel I don't have no fault in him. Amen. Amen. Still going strong. Still going strong. Very strong. Amen. 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 Amen.
God bless you, sir. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Goodbye, world. I'll stay no longer with you. Goodbye, pleasures of sin. I'll stay no longer with you. I've made up my mind to go God's way the rest of my life. I made up my mind Go God's way The rest of my life Oh, goodbye world I'll stay no longer with you With my pleasures of sin I'll stay no longer with you I made up my mind Go God's way The rest of my life Oh, I made up my mind Amen, what a testimony Goodbye world, hallelujah Yes, I'll stay no longer with you Goodbye pleasures of sin I'll stay no longer with you I made up my mind Go God's way the rest of my life Oh, I made up my mind Go God's way Sing one more time Opportunity for everyone, even in this ongoing service. I made up my mind. Have you done it today? Will you get another opportunity tomorrow to go God's way? Oh, I made up my mind to go God's way the rest of my life. Amen, amen. Amen. God bless you. Well, Elder Lassell, God bless you, sir. And when you look at him, you couldn't imagine him to be a bad boy, could you? Amen. And we might have to go find that clap hand church that he was going to. But God bless you, sir. Look, you see how one can make a difference? One person. That's all it needs. Just God to use one. And then he's a multiplication God. Look how he has multiplied the blessing. God bless you. At this time, we're going to sing our second congregational hymn, Death Hath No Terrors. And then straight after that, we are blessed, if I just may take a moment, that we have Bishop Melvin Brooks. Amen. His dear wife, Pastor Yvonne, in the house. Amen. God bless you. Amen. And after we've sung the congregational hymn, sir, would you just come and greet the church and the family in Jesus' name. Let us stand as we are singing. Death hath no terrors for the blood brought one. Mm. Hallelujah. Death hath no terrors for the blood brought one. Oh, glory, hallelujah to the Lamb. The boasted victory the grave is gone. Oh, glory, hallelujah to the Lamb. Jesus rose from the dead. Amen. He rose triumph. Burnt as he said. Snatched the victory from the grave. Rose again, my souls to save. Oh, glory, hallelujah to the Lamb. Our souls die daily to the world and sin. Oh, glory, hallelujah to the Lamb. By the Spirit's power as He dwells within. Oh, glory, hallelujah. 
to the Lamb, amen. Jesus rose, amen, from the dead. He rose triumph, as he said, he snatched the victory from the grave. Rose again, I souls to say, oh, glory, hallelujah, to the Lamb. Last verse, please.
Interjection just now as we have Bishop Brooks here. Let him just greet the church and then we'll hear from Kurt Knowles, nephew in Jesus' name. Bishop Designate Landell, his wife, and to Bishop Bailey, and to Elder Campbell, Helmaz, and to all our ministers here, friends, my wife and daughter, and about some brothers from church here today, and to the family. Uh, I've met your mother, grandmother, mother-in-law twice, I think it was, once at her home and once here, when husband transitioned. But I heard about her. James is a great promoter of his grandmother. Amen. And listen to the legacy conversation he shared with us. And then Cousin LaSalle came alongside that. James has some more work to do. Uh, because it's funny that uh, Elder Reed was one of the three or four men who got my father saved. And in my family, there are about ten of us in ministry in the U.K., and in Jamaica, there's a lot of them. The connection is extraordinary. Nevertheless, we come to celebrate the life of this lady here. And I want you to know that death is no confuser except by itself. God told us we're going to die. At least in the flesh. Uh, but, but, but now, death doesn't control us because Christ died for us. And the idea is for us to recognize the power we have in Christ. In Christ. In Christ. And uh, the, the danger we have in the church world today, Bishop May said this, is that we don't recognize the power of his death. And we emphasize how it works now. But it's the power of his love, his death, his resurrection that give us hope for eternal life. Amen. The future is brighter when Christ is the center. Amen. And finally, to James and to the younger ones coming up, I realize now that you have to reset and readjust, reorganize, and refocus because the legacy is broader than you thought. So move forward together, live in faith, and trust God. The future is brighter, and mother's passing, all it meant was her body couldn't contain her anymore. So she left. She left the body. But she's not dead. Solomon told us that we die, our body goes back to the earth, but our spirit goes to God. So we're still alive. Come on, celebrate life. God bless you. Amen. God bless you, sir. Amen. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. And right now, we're going to hear from Kurt Knowles' nephew. God bless you, sir. Amen. I'd like to say morning, everybody. You'll have to excuse the nerves. I didn't really think I'd make it up here. I'll be honest with you. But I made a promise, so I'm going to fulfill that promise. I have so many things to thank my auntie for. First of all, my mother, because my mother was the youngest sister, and she treated my mother like her own child, so to speak. My mother then had me, and then I became auntie's new son. <laughs> much probably to Michael's annoyance because he had to share everything with me. Amen. But Michael was this brother I never had. My mum didn't want a big family. She wanted to go out. <laughs> auntie, auntie would stay in. She'll look after you. So to me, I've lost the mother too. Um, I listened to Andrew known him for many years. I was one of those kids in the living room when he used to come in. Me and Mike would laugh, look at each other and try and tease him. You know? Um, 
So many things, I mean, Andrew touched upon. I had a speech, but Andrew killed it. I thought I was special. I thought she only done these things to me. But so far, everyone's come up here and said exactly the same things I wanted to say. So that just shows how great she was. As Andrew said, she wasn't loud. She didn't make any fuss. She wouldn't even acknowledge what she'd done for you. She used to just make it as if it was nothing. She could make me cry without even touching me. And I'm not telling many people that. Because she was the only one. She didn't have to raise her hand to me. She could just talk to me. And when she was right, she was right. All I could do was cry. And my mum was good at it. Because anything I'd done wrong, me and she could argue. She'd just wait for the weekend. Because the only place I wanted to go on a Friday, West Bromwich. I want to go home. And she'd send me there, laughing at me. Oh, Little did I know, she'd already found auntie. <laughs> auntie knew every detail of everything. And she'd deal with me. I'd go back home on the Monday for school, the best boy in the world. By Wednesday, I'd forgot auntie. <laughs> so I was going to auntie's every weekend. I call it, I was, I don't know, nosy. Um, I don't know what it was, some called it naughty. I would call it inquisitive. But I had the greatest upbringing a person could have. I had love, protection. I've still got it now because, like James said, it gets handed down. I've had to step up. I'm watching my cousins step up, and as usual, they go first and I follow behind. And I'm so proud of my cousins for always. They're not my cousins. They're my brothers and sisters. My kids know this. They're standing at the back. I've always said they're closer than cousins. They are my brothers and sisters. I love you all, and I thank you very much for making me, me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wonderful. Wow. Wow, indeed. The legacy expands. It doesn't just go on. It now is expanding. God bless you, Kurt. Wonderful words. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. At this time, Calvin. Amen. We're going to hear from Calvin Beckford. Amen. Son-in-law on behalf of the Beckford family. In Jesus' name. I'll start by saying good morning to everybody. Um, really pleased to see such a large crowd here for a very special lady. Um, I was having a conversation yesterday. I was out for dinner with Kalisha. And I said this to all the other day. I said, um, I got to look at the, the program for today. And I went, I don't want to follow James. <laughs> that's just, the, that's just the, the way things go. But I, as I looked through it, I said, if I'd seen that, we'd have changed our water route. And because, um, you know, I think the love she's shared, I think, goes beyond any boundaries, I think, even I've known. So I'm speaking on behalf of the, the Beckford family, and just to give a bit of history, you know, we've. Andrew kind of reckon, you know, mentions that, you know, five decades, 52 years is how I can put that. So I've known the Fletcher's family since I was five years old. I think Kurt puts it quite rightly. You know, I, I could call myself many things, but I think, you know, I could call her, you know, mother-in-law, but she's more than that, you know. For, you know, Kurt mentions, to, you know, about Michael, you know, being the only son. Sorry, Mike, you never were. <laughs> you know, Kurt, myself, we were all, you know, we all kind of grew up together. And we were seeing, you know, my father um, would have been the person who would have been standing here today giving this, giving this talk. Um, you know, I lost my father and my sister a couple of years ago. But our family history goes back. It's so intertwined that, um, you know, you say Beckford, you say Flesher, they're almost interchangeable in many ways. 
Now, when I think back, you know, and I, I, I say this to my kids sometimes, it's like, you know, people see where you are today rather than where you've come from. And history is an important thing. You know, so for those who remember 75 Lodge Road, 90 Lodge Road. So the Fletchers lived at 75 Lodge Road. We lived at 90 Lodge Road. Myself and Angela um, were pretty much, I guess, you know, um, you know, James used the words Mummy Fletcher, other people use Sister Fletcher, Missionary Fletcher, the, you know, there's so many words to describe. Um, I took a different view. You know, a lot of people call her, um, you know, auntie, uncle, everything else. I probably called her every one of those names and more. Um, that was the relationship we had. And for me, um, you know, when I think about it, you know, I think mother, grandmother, great grandmother. Um, and she wasn't just a mother to her children. And I think that's something that I want to expand on a little bit more. So if you think of not just myself and my family, not just, um, you know, aunties, uncles, but she was mother to, she fostered a lot of children. She was mother to a wealth of people. And I've got to say, the love she had was boundless. You know, I've never, never met anybody in my life like her. And I think for me, when I, when I, when I think about this, um, and I've, I've written a load of notes, and I was talking to Audrey the other day, and I said to her, you know, I'm proud and privileged to be asked to say something or speak about her, because, you know, she was everything, as far as, I can, as far as I'm concerned. But the challenge, as I see, was, you know, how do you find the words to explain exactly who she was? I don't think there's enough words in the world to describe that. And it feels like an impossible task because then you asked me to do that in five minutes. I could wax lyrical about her day and night, but we don't have time for that. Um, so... I think the few things for me that were poignant, you know, and I think when I, when I look at, you know, not just her children, the grandchildren, the great-grandchildren, and you could just feel the love, you know, to be part of a family, you know, that you're probably not maternally born into, but feel like you're part of a family. You have to experience that. There's nothing I can tell you that would ever get you close to what that feeling is like. Yeah? So for, for those of us, you know, I see Millie clapping there, Gilroy, the others who have come and become just embedded in this family, um, it has been an absolute pleasure. You know, when Audrey called me to tell me about her mother, and I said to her, Do you know what, you could have asked me about 30 things that you wanted to tell me, and that would never have been one of the things that I would have said. It came as a bolt out of the blue. But not only was she, you know, she's special in many ways, she was a stunningly beautiful woman. And I mean that not just physically. I mean, you know, from the heart. I mean, she was just beautiful inside and out. And when I think about, you know, the times and that I've spent with her, I was saying to Kalisha last night, we're sitting there having dinner, and we're just talking about a few things, just. And I said to her, um, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting, the kind of relationships you've built. Um, Mr. Fletcher, Daddy Fletcher, you know, I, I, I said to, I said to Galicia last night, I could walk into Hilltop and the room could be empty and it's just him and I. I'd say hello, he'd say hello, and we could sit there for an hour and never exchange another word. <laughs> Can I? And I said, and it wasn't because there was anything other than he was never going to make you feel too comfortable. That's just the guy he was. And then there was a side of me that was always going to be, well, I'm not going to try and suck up to anybody. So we had this kind of mutual respect. And that's the way it was between us. But it was different with Mommy Fletcher. Yeah, I could sit in a room with her and we could talk about anything and everything. She had a smile that just lit up a room. 
And it's interesting because we look as we when I was sat with Paul and everybody else and they're looking at the photos for for you know what they're gonna use. And it's rare you ever see her in a photo smiling. But if you ever spent time in that woman's presence where you didn't smile, you didn't see her smile. I mean, and it was an infectious smile, not just the smile. If you knew her, and I mean really knew her, and you knew that laugh that she had, and it was one hell of a laugh, to be honest. Um, but that was, the, that was who she was. For me, when I think about what she's done, what she means, not just to me, but to a lot of people, and I try to kind of think of who would be a good comparison. And the first thing that came to mind for me was Mother Teresa. You know, that's, you know, there was a kind of almost like a, something regal about her. You know, and I think James says, you know, you know, she that always wanted to look good. And it's not just the way you look, the way you present yourself. It's more around what that person is, you know, what that person means. And I think for me, you know, and I've, I've written a whole lot of things down here, none of which I've read. You know, and I was, and all you said this to me the other day, I says, you know, I'm, I'm trying to write the perfect tribute um, to somebody who means so much to me. That's probably, if I think about it, the two people that were probably most influential in my life was my father and, um, you know, um, Gloria Fresher. I call her Gloria sometimes. Sometimes I call her Fetty. A lot of times I call her a bunch of things. Um, I, you know, James mentioned, you know, the time is going on holiday. You know, I remember going to, to time in Florida, you know, and I was always the designated driver. <laughs> so no matter where we went or whatever we did, you know, even with Hopi, you know, we all used to go looking, you know, when they were buying properties in, the, in, in Florida, and I'd be driving around looking at properties. And James is right. There is nothing she could ask you for that you would ever say no to. No matter how you, no matter what your plans were, no matter what you wanted to do, when she looked to you and asked you to do something, the only thing you wanted to do was to do it. Because that's just the woman she was. And I, for, for me, you know, as I look back around, you know, um, not just my kids, you know, I see the, you know, she was proud not, of, not just of her children. You know, she's proud of the other children that she fostered, the children that she nurtured, the other people that she mentored. And, you know, I see her doting, when she was doting on her grandchildren, her great-grandchildren, you know, to grow up, to see that kind of love when I think about the world that we live in and all the things that happen in the world, you know, and I think when I see and think about what she was able to do, you know, that's one person. Um, I knew her mother, so mama, I knew papa. So I've grown up with a whole family for the whole of my life. So for me, um, I don't think there would ever be words that I could really do, that I could really kind of express that would really do justice. I think the one thing I can say and I will say is thank you, you know? And that, I mean, from the bottom of my heart, she was everything and more. I could go on, and I, like I said, I could go on for a long time about her because I love that woman. I still love that woman to this day. We're traveling in the car up and Kurt, myself and Hopi, were sat in the back. And Kurt made the phrase, he goes, look, you know, as far as he's concerned, Mom is still at 75 Lodge Road. Yeah. You know, Mommy Fletcher's still at Hilltop. Yeah. She's always going to be there. I have to say, and I can't stop with that. I'm going to end with a quote, but before I end with a quote, you know, we're talking about all these things. I mean, she was a woman who could do everything. And what I mean, what I mean by that is, if you'd ever tasted a cake that she'd baked, if you'd never have, all I can say is, You've missed that. There is no cake that anybody can bake for me that could ever match what she baked. I'm coming to that. I'm coming to that. And I've got to say, you know, in terms of, you know, James talked about, you know, the, the birthdays, the Christmases at Ilta, the one on the line thing that fed all of that was the dinner. Sunday dinner, Saturday soup, you call it whatever. That woman could cook. I mean, she could seriously cook. 
I'm surprised I'm not five times my size because, quite frankly, even when I come over, the first thing I'd be saying, I said, Audrey, um, tell your mum I'm coming over. Cook some soup. You know? And God bless her because as soon as I walked in, even when she could barely move her hands, she'd still make that soup. You know what I mean? And for me, you know, that just tells me a lot about who she was. And I can't, you know, when I think about um, the life she's led, you know, a lot of people made a re reference to the fact that I've grown up with the family since I was, like I said, five years old. And I've never heard her raise her voice. I have never heard her angry. I've never heard her shout. And I've got to say, you know, I think Kurt put it nicely. She was the voice of reason. So no matter what happened, no matter what the situation was, no matter how bad people thought things were, she was the person who could give you perspective. She was the person who could make you feel that no matter what you did, no matter how bad you felt you'd done, she would make you feel like, look, there is a way out of this. There is a solution to this problem. You can be a better person. And that's just the woman she was. So I'm going to end with a quote. I mentioned the phrase Mother Teresa early on. So I'm going to end with a quote by Mother Teresa, which says, spread love everywhere you go. Let no one ever come to you without leaving happier. And I think that sums it up. That, for me, just sums it up. Nobody ever left her presence feeling anything but happier than when they walked in to see it. Thank you. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you. Wonderful reflections. And I guess we can all say, Gloria May Fletcher, thank you. Amen. God bless you, Calvin. Amen. The choir now is going to come and sing to us. Amen. Hallelujah. And then that will be followed by Sister Donna with a tribute on behalf of the church. I heard a thousand sounding out his 
Sister Donna now in Jesus' name. Amen. Shall we praise the Lord, say? Praise the Lord. And shall we praise the Lord all the time? Praise the Lord. You know, it gives me great pleasure and it's a privilege to be standing here. Earlier I said I'd rather be sitting down and listening to everyone, but I have sat down and heard everyone, so there's not much for me to say, so I'm really glad about that. <laughs> Um, Sister Fletcher, what can I say? I'm, right now I'm filled with mixed emotions because I know she's in a better place. I know she's free from pain, but I miss her. Yeah. I really miss her. Amen. Sister Fletcher was known by many names, as you all heard. Feddy, which I would never call her. <laughs> Gloria, again, I would never call her. Mom, maybe, Sister Fletcher, Mission Fletcher, Nan, Nanny Grump, you know, or etc., etc. Lots of names. But when I looked up the name Gloria, it stood for praise and honor. It also says, and this will understand James, why she was the way she is, James. It says, Gloria is someone who is dignified, well-dressed, outstanding, self-sufficient, impressive, but someone who was not a pushover. Need I say any more, praise the Lord. We knew Sister Fletcher in Mount Horeb as a quiet woman of God. Very accommodating. A lot of people are talking about 75 Lodge Road and Calvin said about 90 Lodge Road, but hey, I was nine Lodge Road. <laughs> we were the ones that went up that way. And we knew she was very accommodating. I, I, I felt it sometimes for the Fletcher's family because whenever we had meetings, back in those days, there wasn't a lot of cars, so you had to stop at a brethren's house. Well, they didn't go further than 75, 75 Lodge Road, so everyone that came for anniversaries, programs or whatever, they had to stay at 75 Lodge Road. So they were very accommodating and, and they, you know, sh sheltered everyone, cared for everyone, fed everyone in 75 Lodge Road. She was a very prayerful, motherly figure in the church. Someone you could find in, and as a mentor, she would tell you her honest opinion whether you liked it or not, she'd tell you. I found her voice very comforting. And as um, it was said, she could say things without raising her voice because it was firm and it was fair. So she, even though she didn't have to raise her voice, you knew exactly what she was meant to say to you. And if it was a telling off, it was still said in a tone of voice that you understood. But the best thing I am glad for, Missionary and Fletcher for, was the one-to-one -one times that we spent together. And I know the family knew this because when it was our telephone time, it was our telephone time. And no one interrupted that. And we would talk and talk and talk. And I can see by all your faces you want to know what we talked about. No, I'm not going to tell you. It was our special time. You know, it was our special time. And I found this poem, and it sort of, sort of sums up, because I know about time and all that, when, what we're feeling right now. And it starts like this. We never expected that morning God would call your name. Because in life we loved you dearly, and in death we'll do the same. It broke our hearts to lose you, but you did not go alone. For part of us went with you when the Lord called you home. You left us with peaceful, precious memories. Your love will still be our guide. 
And though we cannot see you, you will always remain in our hearts. The family chain is broken and nothing seems the same. But as God calls us one by one, the chain will link again. Praise the Lord. You know, before I take my seat, I just wanted to remind us, this was not the way we wanted it. And as a songwriter said, this was not the way we planned it. But God. Yes. But God. He knows better than me. So until then, until then, God bless you. Amen. Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Sister Donna. Thank you. Mount Horeb Church for those reflections in Jesus name. Amen. Now I'm going to ask you all really to pray. Amen. Because we're going to hear a song from daughter Sister Audrey Amen Beckford and then that will be followed by the eulogy by daughter Minister Pauline Forbes. Amen. God bless you. Yes. Encourage her. She's come. Thank you. Hallelujah Jesus. Amen. Because he left, I 
bless you. Amen. So, Audrey, thank you, God. Life is worth living Be just because Jesus lives. Amen. And we're glad that many of us know that. But if you don't yet know it, that's the only reason why life is worth living. It's because Jesus lives. Amen. We're going to hear the eulogy now. Amen. As daughter minister Pauline Forbes is coming. Amen. Encourage her as she comes. In Jesus' name. Praise the Lord, everyone. I give honor to the Holy Spirit of God. I greet the bishops, household of faith, family, friends. I greet you all in the mighty name of Jesus. It is my privilege to read the eulogy of my mother, the late missionary Gloria May Fletcher. Gloria May Walters, affectionately known as Sister Feddy, was born in the district of Cascade, in the parish of Jamaica, on the 3rd of September, 1939. She was the first of six siblings born to the late brother Alfred and sister Dolly Walters. She was brought up in a loving, caring environment. In those days, many Jamaican children were given pet names, and I know that many of you in here can testify to that. The name Feddy wasn't chosen at random it was part of her inheritance. Her father, Alfred, was known as Mas Fed Fed. So it seemed logical that his first daughter, his first child, should be called Feddy. Sister Feddy attended Mount Moriah Elementary School, followed by Bohemia All Age School where she took a Jamaica local examinations. She once recalled her weekly routine. It was school during the week, but on Sunday you knew it was church, whether you liked it or not. <laughs> Sister Feddy was happy to attend Mount Moriah Baptist Church until she left Jamaica. The young Sister Feddy developed a flair for dressmaking. She was able to make her own clothes, even without a pattern. She seriously considered becoming a seamstress until her mother advised that people would be happy to take the garments, but they won't be quick to pay you. <laughs> Sister Feddy continued to make clothes as a hobby but looked elsewhere for inspiration for her career. When she noticed how carefully the district nurse looked after her baby brother, and that was Ken, she decided to become a nurse, an ambition which would later cause her to leave her homeland in pursuit of a nursing career in England. In 1956, Sister Feddy met the love of her life, the late Brother Lloyd Fletcher. Brother Fletcher became a frequent visitor to the Walters household on the pretext of visiting their elderly grandmother. With Granny's approval, he was more than halfway there. In April 1958, Sister Feddy left Jamaica to pursue her nursing career in England. Over the next three years, she completed her nursing training at Haley Green Hospital and went on to work as a district nurse for Worthley Hospital. And she spoke fondly of her time working on the district. Brother Fletcher came to join the love of his life in 1959. They finally got married on the 17th of March, 
1962. It was a strong and happy union which produced five children, Pauline, Audrey, Michael, Sandra and Andrea. In due course, Sister Feddy also developed a strong maternal bond with her stepson, Eglon, who lives in America. Sister Feddy complimented her husband perfectly. She was calm, quiet, caring and supportive of all Brother Fletcher's community ventures. Their door was always open to support those in need. Sister Feddy was a Proverbs 31 virtuous woman. She was able to successfully combine raising five children with holding down a nursing career. When her children were small, she resorted to night work so that she was at home in the morning to supervise them and ensure that they left for school on time. She was also there in the evening when her children returned home from school. Sister Feddy instilled in her children the importance of living a godly life, making the best of their educational opportunities, having a good work ethic, and being strong and independent. She also taught them to live in harmony and to support each other whenever necessary. Although she grew up as a Baptist, Sister Feddy did not look for a Baptist church when she arrived in England. In the 1960s, she began attending Bethel Apostolic Church, Gibson Road. In due course, she accepted Jesus Christ as a personal saviour and received the infilling of the Holy Ghost. You will hear a personal testimony in her own words shortly. In the early 1970s, the family was introduced to Bethel Apostolic Church in Lodge Road, West Bromwich. It was within walking distance. So, along with her mother, Mother Walters, Sister Feddy joined the West Bromwich Church family. Under the leadership of the late Pastor Terence Landell, Sister Feddy took an active part in the church, although she preferred to work behind the scenes. She later became a missionary worker and she served as the secretary for the women's department in the 1980s. Sister Feddy enjoyed studying the word of God. She was constantly adding to her Christian books and study material. In 1999, she completed a Rhema Bible study course along with Sister Hopi. This spurred her on to attend Bethel Institute of Biblical Studies, which we know as BIBS, from 2000 to 2002 to obtain the certificate in biblical studies. In an effort to draw her family closer to the Lord, Sister Feddy established the Monday night prayer meeting, as we've heard. She witnessed firsthand the Lord's faithfulness in delivering family members from a variety of situations and circumstances. Her heart's desire was that all family members, from the greatest to the smallest, would come to know the Lord. We, her children, will continue that prayer meeting. Although throughout 
her working life, Sister Fedi often declared that she would retire at 50. In 1989, at 50 years of age, her faithful declaration became a reality. She was able to retire from her position at Nuffield Hospital after injuring her back while lifting a patient. This was merely an opportunity to embark upon a new career. In 1989, brother and sister Fletcher became foster parents. Over the next 26 years, they offered support and guidance to numerous teenagers who became part of their strong family unit. Some of our newfound brothers and sisters are with us today. And I'm just briefly going off script. One of my younger brothers, Paul, had um, a child recently and in honour of mom is called his child Gloria. Amen. That is just to show you the impact of Sister Fede. The death of her life partner and dearest friend in February 2016 was a traumatic time for Sister Fede, but strength from the Lord combined with her unwavering faith and the support from her children helped her to overcome the difficulties which lay ahead. In the last years of her life, Sister Fedi experienced arthritis in her hands and feet, which meant that during the cold winter months, she was compelled to stay at home. In all that time, she did not complain. Sister Fedi was determined to remain as active and independent as she could. She would always challenge herself to finish a task rather than ask for help. Her determination was a huge strength. On Thursday, the 25th of November, 2021, was just a normal day in Sister Fedi's life, interacting with her family and helping with her great-grandchildren. There was absolutely no indication that her time on earth would soon draw to a close. In the early hours of Friday, the 26th of November, 2021, Sister Fedi quietly and peacefully transitioned to glory. She is safe in the arms of Jesus. As Auntie View has said frequently, she lived quietly and she passed away quietly. Sister Fede has finally said goodbye to her sisters, Sonia and Hopi, brothers Errol, Boise and Ken, her son and stepson, four daughters, nine grandchildren, four great-grandchildren, a number of nephews and nieces, other relatives, <coughs> friends, colleagues, and well-wishers, she has gone, but she will never be forgotten. Her memory and final testimony that she gave a week before she went on to be with the Lord will remain in our hearts. All I've left to say is, Mom, rest in peace till we meet again. I was a saint, wasn't baptized, but I was God-fearing. And 
going to church means a lot to me. Mm -hmm. Went to church and they'd ask me that I want to, did I want to be baptized? What did I, I say? I'm not ready yet. And I was never ready yet. I kept on putting it off and putting it off. But deep down, I know there was something bothering me. Mm -hmm. I want to do something about it. Mm -hmm. And I, I thought about it. And as soon as there was an altar call, they said altar call. I just passed the baby to somebody. Yeah. And I went straight up. And I knelt down. What she said to me, Sister Fletcher, are you ready now? Because she knew that she knew I was struggling. Are you ready now? I said, yes, I want to be baptized. And I was baptized on that day. Um, I went to church um, on the Tuesday night. Tarin came on, Tarin meeting. And I was knocked out. Mm -hmm. I was speaking and I didn't want to speak. Mm -hmm. I want to shut up and I couldn't shut up. And I spoke and I spoke and I spoke. I had asked my brother before, Brother Errol, on the Sunday, the previous Sunday when I got baptized, I was speaking and I asked him, am I feel? He said to me, when you feel, you don't have to ask nobody. Mm -hmm. You know you feel. And when I got filled on that day, I didn't, and that night, I didn't have to ask anybody. I knew that I was filled. I've had some rough times. I'm not going to sit here and say it was all um, plain sailing. I've had some rough, rough time. But I know in whom I believe. I learned to trust in God. And Many times people struggle and the people run away from it. They do like Jonah, send him out to minister mm. and he ran away because he didn't want to do it. Mm. Many times, many of us feel like that. Mm. He's calling us and our own um, stubborn will. We run away, we hide away instead of coming and instead of saying, yes, I did that for years. Because he is our maker. He created us. He knew uh, he knew us. Mm. And many of us today, my grandchildren, my friends, or whoever that is um, thinking about, I can't listen, I can't do other, and I can't do other. The Lord Jesus knows what you can do mm -hmm. from what you can't do. Because he is the handmaid. He made us. Mm -hmm. He sought us and he brought us with his redeeming blood. He gave his life for us. And therefore, he knows what we are able to do from what we're not able to do. I'm not able to go to church now. But that doesn't mean that I am not dwelling in the house of the Lord. Because everywhere I go, he's with me. He knows my way about. He knows my thoughts. He knows everything yes. about me. And because of that, I'm going to stick with him mm -hmm. until my eyes are closed. When I'm gone to be where Daddy Fletcher is, then the Lord will take over. The Lord mm -hmm. will continue. <laughs> and uh, I have no regret that I came this way and I have traveled along this pathway. I can't preach, but one thing I know that I can do, I can live a good life. And anybody out there sees me, they can't turn around and say, you've been doing so and so and I've seen you so and so and so and so. Mm. I am a child of the king. I am God's property. I walk like he expects me to walk. Mm -hmm. And when I walk, I've, I hope that other people will see my walking and come to worship mm -hmm. and admire him. Right now, I just want to 
give him thanks for where I'm at. I'm not angry that I can't hold my hands. I'm not angry that um, I can't walk, go in the kitchen sometimes. Mm -hmm. I am grateful to God that I am here. Mm -hmm. I am grateful to God that I, I can look after myself. I don't have to ask people to put my clothes on. I am grateful. He is a good God. When I tell you that he's good, I know that he's good. Don't hang up, hang about. Mm -hmm. Don't wait. Don't linger. Mm -hmm. Just come boldly, as he said, to the throne of grace. Boldly. Mm -hmm. He will do the rest. Mm -hmm. I give him thanks. And I worship him. I thank him for my children. I thank him for my grandchildren. Mm -hmm. I thank him for my great-grandchildren. I thank him for my in-laws. I thank him for my cousins. I thank him for every member of my family. I thank him for my friends. And I thank him for friends that I don't even know that are coming. I just give him thanks. One more time, one more time. Oh, one more time. Well... I got it wrong. I said Sister Fletcher wouldn't be talking to us today. But she has delivered the message to us. What a reflection. God bless you. We're going to hear some final thoughts from the word. Elder Nicholas Myers in Jesus name. Praise the Lord everyone. Uh, special greetings to the family. Amen. My brothers and sisters in the Lord. Um, you have to bear with me a moment, saints. There's so much that is on my heart to say, and I'm conscious that I've got to do a quick work. So as um, the preacher was going to preach, and he said what he was going to say, and the lady jumped up and shouted. He said he's preaching on the milk of human kindness. And the, pre the lady jumped up and said, just make it condensed. <laughs> so... I've got to just make it condensed today, but it is an honor to be able to say some words for Mother Fletcher. God blessed me with the privilege of speaking for Dad Fletcher, and so I've got to finish the second chapter of the story. Amen. Uh, when I spoke on um, Brother Fletcher's life, I gave some understanding of the meaning of his name. Give God thanks that some of that's already been said for Mother Fletcher, Gloria, meaning praise or honor. When I looked into the Latin root of the word, it also speaks of immortal glory. And we know that in the Bible that our names signify our destiny or where we're heading to. And so we know that she's headed for immortal glory, praise God. And even Fed Fed, um, the pet name has significance because Fed Fed comes from Alfred. And Alfred means wise. And so every time she's being called Fed Fed, she's being called wise, wise. And no wonder then that she became such a wise lady. The book of Daniel chapter 12 and verse 3 said that those that are wise shall shine brightly like the firmament. Speaks of a time when many that are in the earth shall awake, some to eternal life and some to eternal damnation. And we know that Mother Fletcher will be caught up when the Lord comes and she will be meeting us in the air. Praise the Lord. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. When I looked at the program, I also saw the date of her birth and it jumped out of the page at me. And I saw 3rd of September 1939. And I said 1939 is an important year because of the Second World War. And when I looked, I realized that the 3rd of September was the day when Britain and France declared war on Germany. Amen. And I believe that the day that Mother Fletcher was born, God was declaring war on the enemy by raising up a prayer warrior. Amen. And so she completes the final bit of her destiny by taking on the name Fletcher, which is also fitting for a warrior because Fletcher is a maker of arrows. Praise God. So this is a spiritual warrior. And Regardless of what we have all said and the words that I've said, in the life that we're living, the final 
word, the word that really matters for all of our lives is what God said. It doesn't matter. So many funerals are going on today and platitudes are being given for so many people and everybody's finding things to say. But at the end of the day, what does God say about it? And that brings me to the passage of scripture that I want to read and the word that the Lord gave me to share with you for today. And it's taken from the book of Hebrews chapter 11. And I'll read from verse 11 down to 16, and it said, Through faith also, Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed, and was delivered of a child when she was past age, because she judged him faithful who had promised. Therefore sprang there even of one of him as good as dead, so many as the stars of the sky in multitude, And as the sand, which is by the seashore, innumerable. These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, and were persuaded of them, and embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. For they that seek such, say such things, declare plainly, that they seek a country. And truly, if they had been mindful of that country from whence they came out, they might have had opportunity to have returned. But now they desire a better country, that is, a heavenly. Wherefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he hath prepared for them a city wherefore God is not ashamed to be called their God wherefore God is not ashamed to be called their God and the word that I want to leave with you this afternoon is simply this God was not ashamed to call Gloria May Fetcher his God God was not afraid to be associated with Mother Fletcher. Sometimes women in the Bible can be overlooked. And you read the page of the Bible and you think it's all about Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and Noah and all these men of God. But an interesting thing happens in the book of Genesis for Sarah when she dies age 127 that the Bible records the years of her life and he doesn't do that for any other woman in the scripture. And when you look at the pages of Genesis, you could miss the faith of Sarah. But you have to realize that when Abraham got up to leave Ur, no married man can get up and say to his wife, I'm going to another country, but what about your job? Where are we gonna live? How are we gonna provide, how are we gonna, how are we gonna survive? Can you imagine all the questions that you would have as a wife when your husband said, God told me to follow him to a land that he's going to show me? Maybe some women would say, all right, you go ahead where God sent you, but I'm staying here in Ur. But the faith of Sarah was such that she believed God. She grabbed a hold of the promises of God and moved with the Spirit. Again, everybody who's married knows that You can't wake up in the early hours of the morning. In fact, I could speak for my own self. I give God thanks for my wife and I don't mean to embarrass her. But at 3 a.m. I can turn around and say, Deb, are you awake? And she say, yeah. (laughs) At 4 a.m., Deb, are you awake? Yeah. So I find with my wife, she's sensitive to my moves. So for me to get up and creep out would be very hard. Why am I telling you this? Because there was a day when God said to Abram, Abram, take your son, your only son, the one who you love, just in case you're in any doubt which one, the one you love, take him, take wood, take a knife, and go up to Mount Moriah. Now if Sarah never stirred at the night, she surely saw that there's some wood being prepared somewhere. She saw that there's some servants getting some things for the journey. And yet she believed God. 
And yet she closed her eyes and slept on in the bed. And I believe that Mother Fletcher also had a kind of faith like Sarah. She was your matriarch. She has built a godly legacy that we've heard so much about today. And now it's time for you to pick up the mantle, as James has said, and carry on the godly legacy. You are now the matriarchs. You are now the mothers and fathers in Zion that generations will be talking about and looking to your example. Pick up the mantle of Mother Fletcher and run with it and live such a life that at the end of your years, God can say, wherefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God. I want to live a life. All of us here today, at the end of the day, we have to live a life that God can say he was not ashamed to be associated with us. Whether we are Christian or about to, we're thinking of converting, we're thinking of being born again. We have to live a life that God is not ashamed to be called our God. We were told by Jesus that on judgment day, there were those who said, Lord, didn't we do this and do that in your name? Didn't we go here and go there? And he said, I don't know you. Depart from me. I never knew you. So God was ashamed to be their God. But when God in the person of Jesus Christ came down to earth to be our example, a voice from heaven said twice in the scriptures, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. God was not ashamed to be a divinity, was not ashamed to be associated with humanity, with the God man. And Jesus is our example. And the Bible says, Beloved, now are we the sons of God. And so if we are the sons of God now, what will God say of us? I want to live a life that God will say the same as me, as he said of Mother Fletcher, that he's not ashamed to be my God. We said in the eulogy that we said goodbye. But I like that Sister Pauline came back and said, see you later, mom. Because Jesus Christ is the death of death. Jesus Christ is the death of death. He's the end of death. Death is going to have a funeral. Death and hell are going to be cast into the grave. And Jesus Christ is going to be the undertaker. But the undertaker is also the upper taker. And depending on how we live will depend on whether we are going under or whether we are going upper. Praise God. And it's no wonder then the church started in an upper room because it's where they were headed. And so, beloved, let us stay in Christ. Let us live a godly life. Let us set a good example so that God will not be ashamed to be called our God. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Wonderful words of life. Camelda Nicholas Myers. Thank you, Jesus. We have to make sure that God is not ashamed to be called our God. Amen. God bless you. We've had a wonderful going home service, home going service. Amen. For our dear sister in the Lord, the funeral directors are coming now. And we're just going to stand and amen as the final prayer is closed by Senior District Pastor Bancroft Campbell. Amen. And as we are recessing out, a young brother Darrell Daly will be singing for us in Jesus' name. Stand with us, please, and bow your heads. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. We give God a turn. Bow your head with me as we give God praise. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this day which I was given unto us, for the life which I was loaned us, Lord, our God. And as you have seen it fit to take back unto yourself, Lord, we thank you, oh God, right now for those opportunities and experience everyone has had today. And we pray, Lord God, continue for the family and for the friends who over the coming days will continue to mourn the passing, Lord Jesus. And we pray you may give strength in those hours, Lord God, when a memory come back, Lord Jesus, and there is a vacancy, Lord. We pray, God, and Father, you'll be the one to fill that void and give comfort to your people, Lord. Bless this very congregation of your people, Lord, and all those who look on now and the word of God for today. 
and the heart and the mind of your people that will be able, Lord Jesus, to respond to the things which we have heard and make a preparation, God, to meet you. Dismiss us right now, God, with your blessing and continue to lead us into light and glory as we continue to look to you for the victory. And we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you all. Amen. We are going to be leaving and heading straight for Heath Lane Cemetery. And that's B713HR. After the cemetery, we will be then going to WS10 Banqueting Suite in Wensbury. In Jesus' name. Amen. Brother Dora. God bless.
you, you made a way. Don't know how, but you did it. You made a way. Don't know how, but you did it. You made a way. I don't know how, but you did it. Don't know how, but you did it. As you're about to lady, remain, oh God, of your daughter to rest. We pray, Almighty God, Almighty, that your presence will dwell here with our God in heaven. In sad moments, Lord Jesus, but you promise that on the resurrection morning, oh God, you will resurrect her, oh God, and she shall live with you forever. Bless the family at this time, at the sad moment where they have to say goodbye, what goodbye there we have to say. So God, be with them today and comfort their hearts. God bless you all. We are here to say our final departure and our final goodbye to missionary Gloria May Fletcher as we lay her mortal remains to rest. Let me just read some words from the scripture. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. For as much as it had pleased Almighty God of his great mercy, to take unto himself the soul of our dear sister here departed. We therefore commit her body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, in sure and certain hope of the first resurrection to eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change the body of our humiliation, that it may be like unto the body of his glory, according to the mighty working whereby he's able to subdue all things to himself.
the golden pen, the golden pen, the golden pen. Touch my finger on the golden pen, write my name up there. You just write, I'm shouting, write my name up there. My finger on the golden pen, the golden pen, the golden pen. Touch my finger on the golden pen, write my name up there. You just write my name, yeah, write my name. All right, shoulder, write my name up there. You just touch my finger on the golden pen, the golden pen. You just touch my finger on the golden. Touch my finger on the golden pen. It is the golden pen. It is the golden pen. You just touch my finger on the golden pen. You just write my name. Oh, don't be. Oh, God. Hey, hey. Don't you cry. Just say goodbye. bless you all we're going to just pray the final prayer and then the final act will be please, please. completed by please. brother michael and minister pauline as they put the cross here at the head and then you're able to take photographs as you wish let us just bow father we thank you and we glorify you we praise your name today we thank you Lord God, for the sunshine, the rain. We thank you for this wonderful, fitting send-off, home-going service for our dear sister, amen, mother, grandmother, great-grandmother, amen, missionary Gloria May Fletcher. We know her soul is already resting with you, but even as we lay her final remains here in this plot with her dear husband, have mercy upon those that are left behind, that they too will find the joy that their parents had, and that the of the spirit will continue in the bond of peace amongst them and now everyone that say our father which art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Thank you, God. Sleep on me. Sleep on me, love. Beloved, sleep and take your rest. Lay down thy head. Open thy sin. You know we love you well. Jesus loves you very. Oh yes, good night, good night, good night, good night, good night. Come is the slum, slumbered as an infant sleep, but thou shalt wake no more to die and weep. Thine is a perp, fake, secure, and Oh yes, good night, good night, good night, good night, good night. Until the shadows from this earth are cast, 
until he gathered in his shoes at last. Oh yes, until the twilight oh, threw me over. Oh yes, good, good night, good night, good night, good night. Until the east is the glory lights the sky. Yes, until the dead. In Jesus shall arise, O oh Lord, and he shall come, but not in lonely time. Oh yes, good night, good night, good night, good night, good night. until the beautiful thy love divine, yes, the Lord in thy light, yes, of the Lord shall shine, O oh Lord. That glory of time. Oh yes, good night. Good night, good. Good night, good night. Only good night. Oh yes, beloved, not farewell. Oh yes, a little while. And all the same shall
again a fitting send-off for missionary Gloria May, Sister Betty Fletcher. Amen. Hallelujah. So continues in peace.